Before you can begin uh, making gears, you have to make some tooling, some arbors and such, because um, everyone's gears are different, so there really aren't commercially available um, parts to do these kind of things. I mean, for example, the um, this is an arbor I made to um, to hold the gears that have a three eighths inch diameter shaft. So this had to be made so that a gear blank would fit, you know, exactly on this shaft. And this um, is used for um, for turning the gear on the lathe to get it down to the correct size and, and uh, later it will be mounted on the milling machine in the rotary table to cut the, uh, the teeth. So this particular one, like I said, was made for a 3 8 inch hub and um, since I use this one quite a bit I got a little fancy and um, the shaft has um, these dimples in it and there's a set screw so that um, I can stack as many gears as I want um, you know and then set you know the correct adjustment here for the number of gears you know and then I made a, um, a threaded hub here um, that will hold the gears in place. Um, for gears with a quarter inch shaft I took a shortcut because a quarter twenty bolt or screw is um, you know has a quarter inch shaft here so you know this one is a much simpler design I simply threaded this piece of steel and these were all made as uh, 12L steel by the way but um, you know this one I can just mount gears with a quarter inch uh, arbor hole and um, you know hold as many as I need to on here and then um, I had some uh, some of the gears even had a smaller shaft it's about 0.22 or something like that um, so I made another um, arbor again the same basic concept. Um, but you need to do all of these things for your own particular project before you can even get started cutting gears. The next thing is the actual holder for the gear cutter itself. Um, this is a um, an epicycloidal gear cutter. It's the kind of teeth that are used in uh, in watches and so forth, they're um, they have much less uh, friction than um, standard involute gears. And if you're building a mechanism that is turned by hand, or you know, with a crank or something like that, or, or even driven by a pendulum, you need that very low friction. Um, but these teeth are also um, you know, not designed for high force. Um, you know, the involute gears can handle, you know, much greater strain and so forth. You know, you're driving them high RPM with a motor. But anyway, um, this particular gear arbor, which um, there are very few companies that make these anymore. I had to import this from London from a company called P.P. Thornton. Um, but the arbor on this is uh, seven millimeter. So what I did was I made a, a shaft. Again, it's just a, a piece of steel, and um, I cut a seven millimeter boss on the end of it so that the gear would fit, you know, nicely right on the end here. And it's very important that you get the length of this boss to exactly line up with the uh, face of the gear because later you'll see when I begin cutting gears that 
without the gear mounted, you use this, um, the arbor itself, to find, um, you know, to touch off on the top of the gear to find the, um, the high point and set your, uh, set your Z. Um, but anyway, um, once this is on here, a simple, um, you know, threaded um, cap screw with a washer, uh, once that's tightened down, that holds that in place. And then in the gear cutting operation, um, it's hard to see, but this will move um, back and forth as this is turned on the rotary table to, to the next tooth position. And you'll see all that when I get to that. But anyway, my point was that, um, you know, making a project involving gears also involves making a, a whole number of um, tooling. Um, I even made this, um, which is very simple, it's just a turn to a, uh, a point here. And I use this when I'm trying to um, center a blank on the mill. I just bring this down um, and, you know, because it's concentric, it, it centers the gear and I can just set X and Y to zero at that point and then do any milling I might have to do. For example, I mean, later I'll be, you know, cutting spokes in these gears, so getting them back to the zero point is easy to do with this. And throughout the project you'll see that I made lots of fixtures for, for, for different things. But these are basic and this is what you need uh, you know, to get started.